If you have absolutely no idea who the Bunyevci people are, you shouldn't feel any shame. Most people are in the same category. Through my family, I have some ties to this ethnic group, and even I don't know much about them, which is why I decided to educate myself and upload a video on the topic. Let's see what we can find out. Historians disagree on the exact origins of the Bunyevci or Bunyevats people. Based on ethnological and linguistic studies, they most likely inhabited the region of Red Croatia, somewhere between Istria and Montenegro, perhaps near the Buna River in Herzegovina. Some speculate that they were in fact Slavinized blocks who converted to either Catholicism or Orthodox Christianity and then joined Croats or Serbs, but we cannot be sure. We do know, however, that many of them migrated westwards to the area around Knin between the 13th and 16th centuries, only to leave in the 17th century in two different directions. Some moved closer to the sea and became the Maritime or Lika Bunyevci, while the majority migrated northwards, eventually reaching Bačka County in Hungary. Interestingly, a charter from 1561 in Baranya County, also in Hungary, but then under Ottoman Turkish occupation, already mentions the name Martin Bunavac, while in Bačka, a Latin text from 1622 contained the word Bunyevzi, indicating their presence in the region. Based on other historical documents, the northward migration towards Baranya County took place in three waves. The first two happened before and during the Long Cretan War, 1645 to 1669, while the third followed during the Great Turkish War at the end of the century. These Bunyevci, who were called Dalmatians, served as mercenaries in the Austrian army against the Turks, for which they received land and the right to stay. By then, another group had arrived there, most likely from northern Bosnia and Slavonia, towards the end of the Turkish War. They were the Shokci, or Shokats, and just like the Bunyevci, they were Catholic, but they were not the only newcomers, as a large number of Orthodox Serbs also sought refuge there. During the war, in 1690, King and Emperor Leopold I advised the Serbs to rise up against their Ottoman rulers. Their revolt failed, after which their spiritual leader, Patriarch Arsenia III, led them towards the Bačka and received permission from Leopold to settle in the region. This was made possible by the 1699 Treaty of Karlovac, which greatly increased the territory of Hungary, so its Habsburg rulers extended their authority all the way to the Danube and Sava rivers, although the Temeshvar area and the Banat remained in Ottoman hands. A military frontier was established to guard the new border. It was manned mainly by Serbs and Croats, who were ideal for this role. The region always had a mixed population, but this was the first time southern Hungary showed a clear Slavic majority, with 37,000 Serb families arriving, followed by a second wave in 1739, after a disastrous war against the Ottomans. Albanian Catholics also arrived with this new group. The dramatic change was illustrated by the 1715 Austrian census, which showed that more than 97% of the population in Bačka was now comprised of Serbs, Bunyevci and Shokci in that order. Five years later, another census showed 72% Serbs and 22% Bunyevci and Shokci. Only around 20,000 people lived there at the time due to the devastating effects of previous wars, so the newcomers repopulated an empty land, which the Habsburgs didn't mind at all. They wanted more subjects, regardless of their ethnicity or faith. In return, these minorities supported the Habsburg kings during Hungary's failed war for independence between 1703 and 1711, remaining loyal to their new masters. At the end of the 18th century, 
Another census listed more than 17,000 Bunyevci in the town of Subotica, Sabatka, although interestingly, it called them Illyrians. According to 1840 data, 1 1.6 million people lived in Croatia, Slavonia, and the Bačka, 48% of them were Croats, 19% were Šokci, with the latter concentrated in Požega, Virovitica, and Sirmia counties, along with the Slavonian military frontier. They remained hostile to Hungarian independence movements, opposing such changes, but their reaction to the 1848-49 revolution was mixed. During this conflict, Hungarians demanded independence, but they didn't recognize the rights of other nationalities, denying autonomy. Seeing this, most Croats and Serbs sided with the Habsburgs, turning against Hungary. A Croatian army tried, unsuccessfully, to crush the rebellion, while a Serbian Vojvodina was proclaimed in the south, encompassing Sirmia, Bačka, Banat and Baranja, although the Bunyevci and Šokci remained loyal to the Hungarian cause and helped defend Subotica and other towns against Serb forces. In 1849, a large portion of Vojvodina was captured by Hungarian troops, but then the rebellion was crushed by Austrian and Russian armies, and the king merged Serbian Vojvodina with the Banat of Temeshvar in order to weaken Hungary. A roughly equal number of Serbs and Romanians lived there, with no clear majority, so the Habsburgs could continue to divide and rule. The 1867 Compromise united Hungary once again, but the population remained mixed even though Hungarians slowly moved towards this region and assimilation was also ongoing. Still, the 1910 census listed 88,000 Bunyevci and Šokci within the country, with 33,000 in Subotica alone. Their clergy increasingly adopted the Croat national identity, while others established a Bunyevac party that focused on language rights and preservation. Their request for having church services in Croatian was denied by the authorities in 1905, after which a large group of more than 1,000 people converted to orthodoxy. At the end of World War I, a great assembly convened and proclaimed unification with the Kingdom of Serbia, most of Bačka became part of Yugoslavia. The new authorities registered the Bunyevci as speakers of Serbian or Croatian, but they themselves felt much closer to Croatians, supporting the Croatian Peasant Party within the new country. In Hungary, the largest group lived in the city of Baja and nearby villages, where they could use their own textbooks and attend their own schools. After 1945, the new communist Yugoslavia of Josip Broz Tito did not recognize them as a separate ethnic group, which was followed by a similar step in Hungary. Therefore, Bunyevci and Šokci students switched to Croatian, Serbian or Hungarian schools, depending on their location, although they still preserved their identity, which was still clearly visible in Baja in the 1980s. During the Yugoslav wars, the Bunyevci in Serbia identified themselves as Yugoslav, staying neutral, trying to avoid persecution. After the war, in the 2002 census, they were once again listed as a separate group with 20,000 Bunyevats and more than 70,000 Croatians, partly because many Bunyevats and Šokats persons declared themselves as Croats. We saw a similar trend in Hungary, where Parliament rejected proposals to recognize the Bunyevci minority, claiming that this would also divide and then destroy the small Croatian community. In Croatia, a small number of Bunyevci live to this day around the Velobit Mountains and the city of Senj, but they have a definite Croatian identity. Just like in previous decades, their main cultural centers are Subotica in Serbia and Baja in Hungary. Their presence is still visible, with festivals and gatherings, feasts and dances, not to mention musical instruments, mainly the tambura, which I remember seeing in my own family. The Šokats have their own events, of which the most well-known is the Bušojaraš in Mohács, Hungary. 
It celebrates the end of winter with traditional masks and weird costumes drawing large crowds every year. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with more uploads.